All right guys, so something slightly different to the usual uh, four-wheeled stuff that we do. Four-wheeled meaning cars, not quads. Um, we've basically got Andrew's WR450F here and also his YZ250, or YZF250 I should say. Um, so what we're gonna do is, uh, last enduro event, Andrew um, sustained a branch through the radiator, which, We'll show you better when we pull it out, but yeah, basically straight through there, which is, what did you use to fix that? Um, like a two, a two part putty. Yeah, like a- I need it. That's it, need, need it. it. yeah. Yeah. Which got which me through- it held up. Yeah, got me through the- uh, A massive enduro. <laughs> yeah, sunny corner. Yeah. yeah. So basically we have got some GPI aftermarket radiators. Well, Andrew does, this is his bike, so. I'm just here to do all the, the fucking around fab work, fab work if we need to. So these have come from um, Melbourne in China. So, you know, there've been mixed opinions about these fitting and not fitting and, you know, fit up issues. So we're gonna bite the bullet and show you guys what's actually involved. Um, so there's them. They actually hold more coolant as well, don't they? Yeah, that's right. Than the uh, standard ones. Yep. And they're how much cheaper? Well, I paid uh, 90 bucks shipped, including silicon hoses That's ridiculous. from Flea Bay. That's ridiculous. Yeah, versus, As opposed to what, 300? Uh, $368 for a right hand radiator, excluding the uh, cap. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> okay, so it's definitely worth it if they fit. Yeah. And then we've also got aftermarket uh, force radiator guards. So we've got a set for the WR and also a set to go on the YZF. All right, first things first, pull it apart, Andrew. I'll do it. All right, this feels very weird, me watching you do some work. <laughs> Not saying you don't do any work, I but it's just... I, I, I resemble that. <laughs> right, so obviously guards off first, or fairings. Yeah, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the seat off and the tank off. Yep. Uh, only because I've got to do the spark plug anyway, because it hasn't been done since the uh, the sunny corner enduro yep. rally last year. So she will cut the beating. Yeah, I spent a week up there, so I did a fair bit of riding, um, and it was uh, as you probably those of you that are into your enduro know, it was a um, a pretty wet um, affair. And is that the one where the bloke went down the well? Yeah. <laughs> so apparently... I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen that video. I should, yeah. I didn't need to take the back one off. Yeah, there was a guy that um, yeah, dropped down the well. Well, he did well. He did very well. To survive, <laughs> that is. You know what I'm going to need? A screwdriver. A flathead, just that. a small one. So while Andrew's doing that, for the regular viewers on the channel, you can see I've been busy making my custom EJ25 equal length header, all steam pipe, schedule 40, 40 NB runners into merge collector, which is gonna be uh, 50 NB over here for the up pipe. As you can see on my old motor, I've also got um, a jig made up to adapt uh, my rotated up pipe um, to where the factory one comes in and also my manifold to where the factory one comes in. So if you do purchase one of my manifolds, you can run your existing up pipe or any aftermarket up pipe, basically. So we basically got a knife and um, we cut through the, what are the cooling fins, I guess. Yep. And then we just cut the veins. I cut them across the two and then folded them, just kept folding them down with yeah. a pair of long nose pliers. Yeah. I'm um, hoping, and then just put- Which even then would have almost been enough. Yeah, yeah. It did, we checked it and um, it did leak. Yeah. The kind uh, fellow rider up there that had another tube of needed, so I went through another tube and just jammed. Yeah. So there's two tubes of needed. So since there. then have you stocked up on needed? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I. Um, I, vowed, I haven't even thought of it. No, I, I vowed to uh, put the radiator guards on this as soon as I got back, and that yep. was 
12, 10 months ago. <laughs> and I've, still been, I've still been riding without radio to yeah. go, so I think I'm just lazy. Yeah. So I figured... Um, pine poor. Pine poor, thank you, Carl. Not lazy, I guess. Yeah, and I guess, yeah. you know... <laughs> Yeah, what incentive, great incentive if Carl wants to come riding this weekend. Yeah, I've got to fix I'll the pull, bike I'll be riding. I'll, I'll pull a favour and, uh, <laughs> and see what uh, whether he can give me a hand. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I want to pull the, I guess drain it first and yeah. then uh, pull the radiators off. Yeah, let's do it. And the great unveiling. Well, Carl, I'm running one of these in my uh, SR20 Dado 1600. Yes. And uh, so it's far, so it, well, it's that plus the Durali radiator uh, um, fan seem to keep the uh, temperatures in yeah. check. Mate, they are really good quality. Actually, it doesn't look too thick, to be honest. That's really nice. Like nice TIG welds. Not. Well, I've heard people saying these things are messy, and oh, mm. that's really nice. And there you go, and that's uh, pretty good feedback coming from uh, Custom Car. <laughs> well, they even polished them up for you. Like, yeah. yeah, that was the that extra looks really two dollars, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? They were 130 bucks. I put in a bit of um, 50. <laughs> nah, I thought I'd be reasonable, 110, <laughs> which they accepted my offer, and then I got a. Uh, I got a uh, a twenty dollar discount, so I got it all for ninety bucks. Yamaha Blue. Yeah, there you go. Happy days. It looks like it's all. That looks yeah. Pretty good. Oh, I like it. That's good quality. Oh, that's, that's that's better than. It doesn't. Look, than, it's better than the Yamaha ones. It doesn't look that thick, to oh, be these honest. Are, these cores are already crimped on. By the looks of it, yeah. Well, these are actually TIG welded on, so to blow these off. Oh. Yeah. And they get hot, yeah. particularly in oh, summer. No you can hear them. You can hear them boiling when you pull over yeah. after a hard ride. Yeah. All right, so we got the rads off the bike. So you can see this is the, I guess, right hand as you're sitting on the bike. Um, they look like, by eye, they look like they're going to be a pretty much perfect match. So all we've got to do really is to swap these. Uh, rubber bushings over onto the new ones, which is just as simple as pulling this sleeve out. Let me do the honest. There was no way I was doing that one handed. No. <laughs> well, let's whack these on then. Yep. Seeing as though these should be easy enough. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Alright. Go for it. I'll watch. What do you want? Oh. <laughs> Alright. The left one goes on the left side, I guess. Yeah. All right, so as you can see, we've got the rads mounted up with the new silicon hoses, which is a big added bonus. Um, for the guys who watch my channel regularly, you'll know that I'm a big fan of silicon over uh, rubber. I absolutely hate rubber. It is shit. First thing, silicon radiator hoses, silicon vacuum hoses, because rubber just perishes and it's just, it's just shit. So that's always good. The fitment seems to be good. They're obviously loose right now, but they're basically lined up where the holes are. So now we've just got to pretty much mock up the guards and see. We did a quick mock up on the bench before. It looks like it'd be pretty good. All right, so we think we've got these figured out. So left, it's as you see on the bike, isn't it? Correct. Yeah, so that this part basically sandwiches between the rad and the frame through those two bolt holes and it's got these two captive nuts to screw the, the brace into. I think that's those ones. Yep. And then there's two on the two on the guard that you screw these ones into. So the guard is pretty close to fitting up by the looks of it. So um, hopefully you can see it there's well, I'll take it off there's you know, this hole yep. here and this hole here which the factory bolts, they actually give you longer bolts to go right through these into the frame. So we've got to do a bit of clearancing by the looks. Um, this top bracket here, so we can push it back about 10 mil. And also this, got to take a slight notch out of here, which is hitting on the wider tank. 
and then it will sit back perfectly and looks like it'll be a simple fit really okay so you might not even need to weld but just literally grind and bob your uncle That's bullshit good, mate. You reckon? Yeah, that's it. And we don't call your custom car for nothing. Well, ideally it needs to come down a wee bit. All right, so, as you can see, just clearance the holes a bit. Uh, just elongate it with a drill bit, pretty simple. Um, now we should, yep, that's all good. So the rad can, or the guard can sit there and there should be no issues bolting that all up now except getting into this bolt maybe I think we might actually have to cut more of that off to be honest okay I think we're fucked so final thing we've got to cut that right back now we should be all G yeah perfect so if you look through there should hopefully just be able to get a socket through that gap the bottom's obviously pretty good so I reckon we're ready to bolt this rat up. All right guys, so this is what we're doing to install these. Obviously, once you've got the guard on, it's kind of hard to get your hand up and push the bolt in. So, basically got the bolt, then the washer on the other side, then these plastic uh, locking tabs that came with the bolts for the guards. So basically, you can push them through. It actually works a trick. And push your socket through. Left hand side, Dunsky. Thanks, Solomon. That's a quality unit, eh? All right, so left hand side done. Now it's time for the right. I've got a good feeling about this. So. All right, so. Everything sits beautifully. It actually sits really nicely in this little cutout for the this angled um, bracket. So the only thing that I can see so far is like the other one. We're just going to cut this tab off so we can get the access through this hole to do up the bolt. Um, other than that, this is clearanced um, already, which clears the bottom tank, which we have to do on the other one. So that's off the list. So all we're going to do is cut that off. Bolt holes look like they're right, so. Yeah, I think my only con, as I was saying to Andrew before, about the radiator, is they should have made the overflow come out at, you know, 45 degrees or so, just so it eliminates this kind of kink bit of hose, but it's still fine and it'll still flow, so. Other than that, so far so good, I guess. What do we do now? Just bolt the back bracket on and put the uh, tank back on. Do it. So handy hint guys, when you're putting this bar across the back of the rads, um, definitely leave these bolts loose that go into the frame, both sides, because you might have a tiny bit of discrepancy with up and down for lining up these holes. So all these are now lined up and in finger tight so we can basically tweak them down. They will basically hold the rads in alignment and then you can just tweak them down inside the, well, to the frame rail. And of course, the last question you've been dying to know, the tank fits perfectly. Locks in under there. Nicely under there. So, that that is perfect. I don't know what all these people are talking about, having to smash these with a hammer and God knows what else to get them to fit. Like that was, the easiest, easiest friggin' fabrication I've done. Yeah, I was uh, expecting from what the lady at uh, the bike shop yeah. told me is that yeah, the false radiator guards with the Chinese radiators don't work, but... Um, well, there you go. Well, it's required a little yeah. bit of modification. All you need is a, a drill. <laughs> Angle grinder. Uh, four inch grinder. Don't even need a grinder, you could use a hacksaw if you wanted to. Yeah, a file, 
and a bit of can-do attitude. A bit of can-do car. All right, let's do the YZF now. Yep. That should be a piece Pumps of piece. Car, that looks... It's, uh... Now, this was specifically put on because Carl's riding this. <laughs> and I've seen how Carl rides. What are you rides, trying to say? So you need as much protection. Well, actually, that reminds me because, like, those things... They are fucking solid. Here's what happened. Like if you if you hit something with them, unless you're going full out into a freaking gum tree or something, or into a rock, I reckon they'd cop a fair decent beating. These are factory ones. Yeah. So the stick went straight through there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Um, it works without any major modification, like we said, angle grinder or a hacksaw, um, a drill and a file. And basically, basic tools, eight mil and six mil socket, and you can do this whole thing for yourself for what, 130 plus, how much are the rads? Uh, about 120. 120, so. Oh no, 130 plus about so you 90. Can do, you can do this and the rads cheaper than you can do one factory rad. And in my opinion, they're better quality. And they hold more, so. Anyway guys, we're going to do the YZF now quickly, because that should be basically bolt on, no fucking around at all. But yeah, um, if you haven't already, check out my other videos on some pretty sick cars that we do. That's what this channel is mainly about. And for the guys who are already subscribers, hope you like this video, something different, kind of, you know, help a few people out, because there's, there's stuff on the forums, but you know, everyone's kind of, saying different opinions. So in our situation, it's been piece of piss. You know, we're taking our time, getting it right, but you know, really, if we're doing this again, 15 minutes, in and out, done. So, yeah.